Okay, we'll get back to section uh, 7.5 here. And uh, we just have a bunch of integrals really in you know, no, no particular order. And uh, you know, the, the, uh, the plan is, uh, is to integrate them um, using the uh, particular method there. Um, so uh, let's try another example here. Now here I've got a definite integral. Okay, and um, I've also got a rational function, and I, I use substitution, won't work. Um, so, you know, if I let u be x squared plus 3x plus 2, du is 2x uh, plus 3, that's not, that's not what I have up, up top there, right? Um, but the degrees are the same, right? I got a degree 2 polynomial and a degree 2 polynomial. So the first thing that I'm thinking of is, uh, is to actually divide that out, okay? Um, the expression in the denominator goes outside the division bar, and the expression in the numerator goes underneath the division bar. Okay, and we're ready to divide. So uh, if we uh, multiply x squared plus 3x plus 2 by 3, then the leading term is 3x squared. I've got a plus 9x plus 6, and I'm subtracting that. So 3x squared minus 3x squared, that's 0. 6x uh, minus 9x, that's negative 3x. And then 2 minus 6 is uh, negative 4. Now I'm done dividing. Okay, and in general, I'm, I'm done dividing whenever the degree of this guy down here is less than the degree of this guy out here. Okay, the degree again, the, meaning the largest power of x that I see. So I'm going to have, you know, negative 3x minus 4, that's my remainder. Now the complete leftover information is always a fraction that's going to be added to the quotient. So, um, you know, make, make sure that you're adding these. Um, the complete leftover information would be, uh, you know, a plus uh, negative 3x minus 4 divided by x squared plus 3x plus 2. You're always dividing by the expression that's outside the division bar. Okay, and uh, make sure that you, you always have a plus sign though to, there too. I, I see sometimes where students don't have that. Okay, and then it looks like it's, you're like you're multiplying, which you're not doing. So um, let's see the uh, the function inside. When we simplify that, or when we actually divide that out, we get this guy here. Okay, uh, the antiderivative of three is three x, right? So and that the antiderivative of uh, of this guy. Uh, negative 3x minus 4 divided by x squared plus 3x plus 2. Uh, a u substitution won't work, right? If I let u be the denominator, x squared plus 3x plus 2. du is uh, 2x plus 3. I don't have that up top, right? Um, so, but I see that I, I can use partial fractions. Um, so, um, you know, I... Uh, Take negative 3x minus 4 divided by uh, and x squared plus 3x plus 2 factors as x plus 2 times x plus 1. And uh, both those are linear factors, right? So we have a divided by x plus 2 plus b divided by x plus 1. And we got to find a and b. So uh, we got negative 3x. Uh, minus, well, like if, if, I, if I multiply both sides by the denominator here, um, I got negative 3x minus 4 equals a times uh, the x plus 2 is canceled. So a times x plus 1 plus b times the x plus 1 is canceled. So b times x plus 2. And uh, let's see. So then um, when I match the coefficients, a plus b times x well, a plus b, well, I got a negative 3 in front of x over here, right? So a plus b is going to be matched up with negative 3. And then a plus 2b is the constant term. That's been matched up with negative 4 on the other side there. So here's the system of, of equations that I, I have. And, um, yeah, if I subtract the bottom equation there from the top equation, a minus a is 0. Uh, b minus 2b is negative b, and then negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Okay, so b is negative 1, and knowing that b is negative 1 means that if I uh, add 1 to both sides, a would be negative 2. Okay, so um, 
if we uh, go back to the integral here, uh, a is negative 2 and b is negative 1. So I replace those. And uh, now I can integrate these. Um, so the antiderivative of 3 is 3x minus 2 times the ln of the absolute value of x plus 2 minus uh, the ln of the absolute value of x plus 1. This is being evaluated from 1 to 2. Okay, I've got a definite integral there. And so I'll go ahead and plug in the bounds next. Uh, plug in 2 first. So I got 6 minus 2 times the ln of 4 minus the ln of 3. Okay, then minus, when I plug in 1, I have 3 minus 2 times the ln of 3 minus uh, the ln of 2. Okay, so then, uh, let's see, to simplify that, 6 minus 3 is 3. Um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, I can um, bring up the, the power there, so... Um, uh, I'm going to have uh, minus uh, ln of uh, 4 squared is 16. And um, let's see if I also bring up the, the negative 1 there. Uh, 16 to the negative 1 power, that would be 1 over 16. So the ln of 1 16th. Um, and then uh, let's see, negative ln 3 plus 2 ln 3, that would be ln 3. And then uh, minus a negative ln2, that's plus ln2. So then uh, the next thing we're doing, doing here is I'm uh, combining all these um, lns. Uh, I got 3 plus, uh, now I'm adding all these uh, natural logarithms. So uh, the, uh, the next thing there would be to uh, multiply the inner terms. So I got the ln of 1 16th times 3 times 2. Uh, that's the ln of 6 over 16. 6 over 16 is 3 eighths. So 3 plus the ln of 3 eighths, that'd be the simplified version of, of that integral there. Okay, and that'd be the exact answer. I, I, again, make, make sure that you're given the exact answer for, for, for these problems here. Okay. Um, we uh, take a look at a, another one. So... Uh, we got uh, the antiderivative of uh, 1 plus tangent theta divided by 1 plus cotangent theta, d theta. Uh, well, the first thing I'm going to do here is switch everything to sines and cosines. Tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta, and cotangent theta is cosine theta over sine theta. Then um, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to get a single fraction up top and a single fraction down under. So 1, that's same as cosine theta over cosine theta. And uh, 1 down here, that's same as sine theta over sine theta. So then now I'm dividing by a fraction. So the, the rule is to uh, uh, flip the denominator and multiply. When I flip the denominator, cosine theta plus sine theta divided by sine theta plus cosine theta, those are gone. And so I'm going to have sine theta over cosine theta, which is the same as tangent theta, right? Uh, but if we leave it in terms of sines and cosines, then we can make a u substitution. Let u be uh, cosine theta. du is uh, negative sine theta d theta. I've got sine theta d theta up top. Uh, negative would come out of the new integral there involving u. So uh, negative the, the uh, antiderivative of 1 over u du, that'd be uh, negative the ln of uh, the absolute value of u plus c, u is cosine theta. Okay, so my answer is uh, negative the ln of the absolute value of cosine theta plus c. Um, w or you could um, simplify things a bit further. You know, you can bring up the, uh, the, the negative there and treat it as a power of the inner inner term there. So the ln of cosine theta to the negative 1 power, that's the same as the ln of uh, the absolute value of um, 1 over cosine theta. 1 over cosine theta is by definition secant theta. So another answer that you could give would be the ln of the absolute value of secant theta plus a constant. 
there's not really a reason to do that, but so I, 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 I got this um, result circled there. Okay. Um, if we take a look at uh, this next one here, uh, okay, partial fractions. I, I use substitution, won't work, right? I can't simplify uh, this at all. Uh, but the denominator factors, if I factor an x out of that, um, x times x squared plus 4, uh, and I I, I, I'm using partial fractions here. Now, the degree at the top is 2. The degree at the bottom is 3, right? So um, I'm, I'm not dividing anything here to begin. Uh, x is a linear factor. x squared plus 4, that's a quadratic factor. So I got a over x plus b, bx plus c over x squared plus 4. Okay, we got to find a, b, and c. So then the next thing, if I multiply both sides... Of this equation here by x times x squared plus 4. Uh, the x's will cancel on this term here, so you get an a times x squared plus 4 plus bx plus c times uh, x, the x squared plus 4's would cancel there. Okay, and um, so you're gonna have ax squared plus bx squared, that's the same as a plus b times x squared, um, and then plus c times x plus 4a. So then when I match that with the uh, numbers there on the, uh, the left, uh, okay, a plus b is going to be matched with 2, c is going to be matched with negative 1, and 4a is going to be matched with 4. Okay, uh, well that means that uh, a would be 1, c is negative 1, we already know that, and if A is 1, then uh, B is also going to be 1. Okay, so uh, knowing A, B, and C, I can then uh, replace those back uh, in the, the integral there. Okay, so I'm going to be integrating uh, 1 over X plus um, 1 and then minus 1 divided by X squared plus 4. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, let's go ahead and split up this fraction here into two fractions. So I got three integrals, okay. Um, and uh, when I integrate uh, one over x, that's the ln of the absolute value of x plus uh, x divided by um, x squared plus four. I need the antiderivative of that. That would be that would be a u substitution. So if we let u be uh, x squared plus four, du is uh, 2x dx, I got an x dx up top, or one half would come out of that new integral involving u. So uh, one half times uh, the antiderivative of one over u du, that'd be one half times the ln of uh, the absolute value of u, u is x squared plus four. I can lose the absolute value bars there because x squared plus four is never gonna be a negative. Okay, there. You know, I I can keep the absolute value bars there if 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 I want. There's no 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 problems with that. Also, okay, and then minus uh, the antiderivative of uh, one divided by x squared plus four. Um, so uh, let's see from uh, section seven point four, um, we saw that. Uh, uh, when we integrate 1 divided by x squared plus a squared dx, that is uh, 1 over a times tangent inverse of x over a. Well, a would be 2 here, 2 squared is 4. Uh, and so I got minus 1 half times tangent inverse of x over 2 plus c. Okay. I see sometimes where students would, you know, would, they like, they, they, they see, they see you're going to have a, a tangent inverse um, at the end there, um, but uh, you know they, they forget the about the uh, divided by two, um, so you know, don't forget about that. So it's one over a times tangent inverse of x over a. A is uh, is this guy right here. So um, okay, why don't we um, why don't we go ahead and stop right there in the notes, and I'll uh, I'll pick up with uh, this. Uh, next one here in the uh, the next video